team, three great exercises that will work your abs and work your core without doing old school crunches. All right, so the ab crunch accessory, one of my favorites, and it simply attaches in seconds. And <clears throat> love this exercise. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you how to progress this, progress this so you can make it harder or easier. So the basic move is just to simply pull your knees up into your chest. Now, we can add a twist literally, so you can just slide your, your hips to the side, and now you're working your obliques. And obviously I do that on both sides. Now, to turn up the volume, once you get stronger, if I just hover my knees and do the same thing, it makes a whole difference. So you can hover the knees and twist to the side, or if you really want to get saucy, you can go into a full pike. Okay, and then you can do that on the sides as well, so you're working the obliques. Now finally, I'm gonna give you one part of this that I really, really love, is every time you come down to the start position, give yourself a nice back extension. It feels so good, why? Because it counters what we do hundreds of times a day, which is bend forward, bend forward, bend forward. So giving yourself a back extension, and then go into whatever option you use, and you're gonna feel that. You can see I have it about the mid-level, but what I like to do is put it at a level where right around 10 repetitions is where you hit fatigue. Okay, time to work those obliques, the old good old waistline. So, oblique twists, or, or a lot of people call this the wood chop. What you're gonna do is, I'm gonna start in a seated position, so this would be like a level one, and you're just gonna give it a good old twist. Now in this exercise, it's easy to let your shoulders take over. So very, very important is that you keep your chin and your nose in line with your thumbs. So the whole spine is twisting, working your obliques, as opposed to just the shoulders. All right, now let me show you how we can progress this. I'm gonna go ahead and kneel on this. So important for safety when you go to kneel that you anchor in so this is a stable object and then you can kneel and then you can go ahead and, and climb aboard and get ready for the same exercise. Now this gives me a little more range of motion that I'm on my knees. I can go low, I can go high, I can have a little fun and do old school cabbage patch. <laughs> Or, if you want to get even more dynamic, I can go into a kneeling or sit my, my hips back in my heels and then, then come up. So now you're going to add a little balance and coordination, proprioception, onto the third one. Okay, and finally team, Pilates plank. So here's uh, the different levels that we can do in this. Level one would just be to have what we call a closed glide board and just holding plank. All right, you can see my, my, my head is just in neutral. I'm trying to keep everything in line from the top of my head to my heels. All right, <clears throat> so once you want to progress from there, you can do this with an open glide board. So now this is an unstable object and that's going to recruit more core musculature and make it a little bit harder. Number three is you can move into a dynamic Pilates plank by breathing, inhale, slide it up the glide board, up the rails, and then exhale, pull the glide board back down towards the base. And that will really turn up the volume on your, on your core, but also give your shoulders a good workout. Now here's how you make it a Pilates plank. Breathing and core engagement. So once you get into whatever plank you choose, it's deep inhale in, and as you exhale, pull that belly button to your spine. So deep inhale through the nose and exhale, draw that belly button spine. That is the most important part of your core, I believe, because that is that cummerbund inside of your body that supports your lower back. All right, team, enjoy those core ab exercises. Until next time, stay healthy.